Aloha in our day. Spread a little aloha around the world. And breakfast with Bob. Thank you, Poncho Man. Welcome, everybody, back to Breakfast with Bob. We are, this is our Oceanside edition, getting ready for Oceanside 70.3 coming up this weekend. My name is Bob Babbitt. We're brought to you by Master Spas. As fuels go longer, Hoka, let's fly. Form Smart Swim Goggles, Zoot, the original triathlon brand. Premium Plus Sports, Mission Pacific Hotel in beautiful Oceanside. And our Challenge Athletes Foundation, we have now raised $147 million and sent out over 40,000 grants in our first 30 years. Keep challenged athletes in the game of life through sport. The stars of that triathlon life, Paula Finley, Eric Lagerstrom, join us from their palatial estate somewhere up in Oregon. How are you guys doing? Oh, we're good. It? We're good. Thanks, Bob. Thanks for uh, fitting us in and your schedule. And I know we can't be there in person, but. You know, yeah, we're, we're actually. actually are you on we're the already road down road here down? in California? So we uh, we came down a, a couple of days early, but we weren't able to get into Oceanside as early as we wanted. So we're actually in Santa Monica. So oh, nice! Still enjoying the sunshine. Yeah. Good for you. Good for you. And what's the, what's the off season been like for you? What have you been to, up to? Uh, it's been pretty wintry. We've had a particularly snowy winter in Bend, um, but. We spent a lot of time skiing and took a good chunk of time off after Indian Wells, which was the last race of the season. So slowly getting back into it. This came up super fast for us. Um, already April. It's kind of crazy. But yeah, we're sl slowly getting into shape. So it's been a, a pretty productive off season, but also pretty relaxing. So yeah. And for you, Eric, uh, obviously, when you're when you have a show that you have to do on a weekly basis, there's always new equipment. There's always new learnings. What what have you been up to besides the training part of your off season? Um, it's it's actually been a kind of a bit of a change this this off season. I was really starting to feel like uh, doing the video every single Sunday. That triathlon life was going to be a bit hectic, and there were a couple of other things that I wanted to do with the company, for lack of a better right. word, that I hadn't been able to get to um, by sticking to that schedule. So I've actually gone to every other week now, and that's given us a little bit more bandwidth to do something that we're really excited about, which is we started a little development team is what we're calling it of, of young up and coming pros who are trying to help basically with our network and with our know-how of, you know, t 10 years each as professional athletes to help them like make the jump to being pros. And we're really excited about that. So. Well, that's so cool. I mean, cause both of you guys were into the sport fairly young. <laughs> and so you've yeah. seen, you, you know, you've seen the struggles when you're trying to, you know, it's like, okay, if I can mm -hmm. get to that race and make some money, maybe I could pay my rent. Uh, yeah. it, it's a hard sport to make a living at. People don't understand. I think people look at anybody who's designated as a professional athlete, you've got funding, you've got a governing body, you've got all this support. And the reality yeah. is you're sort of out there on your own trying, trying to make it. How did yeah. you identify the athletes that you put on your team? I um, mean, it was, it was a heck of a process, but um, we initially just started off with, we outlined some questions that we thought would be helpful, like your age, where you live, um, race results and goals. Do you have a coach? And then right. we had, we got like 250 or something responses and Paula did the bulk of the work of going through and, and trying to like narrow it down to 50. <laughs> and then I kind of helped from get it from 50 to 20. And then we both went in on those and, it was a massive process, but I, I feel like we did the best that we could at it. And we're really excited about the athletes that we picked. So, yeah, it's fun. And, and, and Paula, how did you, cause that's when for CAF, we'll get about 4,000 grant requests. Like for yeah, this year. crazy. last year we sent out 3,256 and reading through the grants. Yeah. I mean, everybody, I mean, if we, if we supplied everything that everybody asked, it was like $8 million. Right. Right. You're, right. You're not, yeah. you're not doing that. But you want to do it for everybody too. It's of same. course yeah. you do. And you our guys do year, too. Our budget in year one is kind of limited and we funded it through kit sales of TTL. So that was like, feels like everyone's kind of included that purchased a kit. Um, but yeah, reading through them was touching and also a lot of work, but I enjoyed it a lot. Like reading people's backstories and whittling it down was really challenging. But I think the people that did make the final cut really stood out in the way that they are either in their last year racing amateur or first year professional and really have good promise in the sport. And we right. think that these athletes could really 
become big names in triathlon and, you know, making that first jump is, is difficult. Um, the first couple of years, maybe trying to make a podium or trying to get top 10. And so, yeah, I mean, not that these people had to be like superstar athletes to make the cut, but we looked at a lot of different things, but we truly think that we, we have a good team and, uh, yeah, we're, we're excited for what it will look like. It's very new to us and it's the very, very first time we're doing this kind of thing, but it's fun. The other side of it is you guys are perfect examples of this is the the racing and the racing part is beginning of the conversation what you guys have created with social media and with your show that that's another aspect of it did you look at some of these resumes from that perspective of hey this person would be really good they could develop a really nice following somebody that someone would like to sponsor I mean, we have a mix. Some people that we picked already have kind of a social media platform and interest Mm -hmm. in YouTube, but that wasn't a criteria. Um, Some people have only had three pictures on their Instagram grid and we want to coach them along to teach them that that is kind of part part of the sport now. And your athletic results are amazing, but this also, you have to help, you know, build your own brand in order to succeed in triathlon. And that's what we've realized firsthand. So like the mentorship aspect, I guess, is what is also of value. Um, that we can offer and kind of share our experiences. Yeah. The the course in Oceanside is something that obviously suits you. You've won, you've won it, Paula and, and Eric, you've done well here as, as well. What is it about this course that you guys both like? Cause it seems like it draws a great field every year. And yeah. obviously it's Oceanside. It's, it's nice to hopefully have some warm weather, but there's, there's more to it than that. Talk, talk a little about the course itself and why, why you, it brings you back each year. Yeah, I, I feel like it's one of the more adventurous courses that uh, that I've done in the world, um, especially when it comes to 70.3 racing. Like you you run out into the water, it's at a beach start, and you swim back into the harbor, and then the bike course goes you know, through Camp Pendleton there, and then you go inland, and it's all these hills, and you have crosswinds and headwinds and tailwinds, and <laughs> um, you know, you have to be able to have a little bit of bike skills to to navigate that properly, and then the run back and forth there along the strand with just world-class fans hanging out and some, and uh, volunteers is just, it just really makes for such a fun experience from start to finish. And even if you're having kind of a meh day, cause it's the first race of the season, it's still, it's, it's a scene and it's, it's fun. Is it for you as well, Paul? Yeah, I feel the same way. It's just uh well, for one, it's easy to get to for us. We're same time zone. Uh, we drove nice. down, so we got the dog in the van and everything. And um, yeah, I, San Diego is like the birthplace of triathlon. So I think just the culture of triathlon in California here is a really positive and cool and historic um, place to be. So that draws a lot of big names and having Jan here and Chelsea and, you know, the world champions. It's just it's really cool. And it uh, brings more eyeballs to the sport and to this race in particular. Absolutely. And, and Paula, coming off your season where you got, you finished up with first in Indian Wells and second, one of my favorite races was 70.3 Worlds, just mm-hmm. because it was the the battle, you know, you know be, between here you are with Flora Duffy and Lucy Charles Barkley and Taylor, Taylor Nibs up the road. And it, it, there's, it, was, it was the women's race was really, really exciting. And for a long time, you and Flora and Lucy were like right together. How yeah. Fun was that racing that with the big, huge yeah. crowds? Too. It was crazy. It, it's, it almost feels like it didn't happen in my life. I'm like, that's really cool. Was that actually me that did that? Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's cool when you have a big race like that. And I experienced it back in 2010, 2011, when I won WTS races and I didn't really relish in the moment. I just moved on to the next thing. So I really tried to like enjoy that result and use it to build my confidence and having that experience running with two of the best athletes ever Flora and Lucy um, was really, really cool and special and might never happen again, but it really did build my confidence up heading into this year that I can compete with that type of athlete. And I am that type of athlete. So I won't be like that at every single race I line up at, but it definitely is cool to like have that in my recent memory as I head into this season. And Canadian open. Canadian Open in your hometown. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was pretty darn special. <laughs> yeah, well. I'm sad. Uh, the PTO is not going back to Canada this year, but uh, uh, that's okay. It was, you know, maybe once in a lifetime to race in my hometown in that big of a race, and I performed well, so that's all I could ask of myself. <laughs> well, and Big E, you had obviously winning 70.3 Santa Cruz. That that mm-hmm. obviously is, is pretty personal in that area. And yeah. then Alcatraz. And what's so cool is, you look back, I think it was 2015, Annie Potts is going for number seven. 
right? Mm -hmm. And you knock them off. Yeah. And then Ben's going for number five. And you, <laughs> the yeah. spoiler, Eric Lagerstrom <laughs> knocking I'm people gonna, off. Yeah, I've just become the spoiler, the Alcatraz spoiler, the, the streak spoiler. Um, but I mean, yeah, it that last year was very special for me, uh, winning both of those races because 70.3 Santa Cruz is the one of the uh, I've won three 70.3s and two of them are 70.3 Santa Cruz and then repeating Alcatraz so so many years later 2015 and then and then last year um it was really special and I had a great time and as I got towards the end of the season um uh, I didn't end up doing Indian Wells like Paula did cuz I just kind of felt like you know I've I've had a great season I I loved everything that I did and I just kind of want to end with that happy note and and look forward look forward to this year so so when you create your own team, uh, what's what's cool about that is you've you've got this group of folks who you're totally connected to. Mm -hmm. The other side of that is there's a lot of folks who, you know, the, your your energy pie is only so big. And I'm sure a lot of these athletes will have questions and uh, concerns and you become athlete, therapist, uh, <laughs> videographer. You sort of become a little bit of everything. Now, how many total people did you take on your team? There's seven total. And you're right. It okay. is like something we're conscious of that, you know, divvying up our time more. And that's why Eric went to once every other week with the vlog. And we have a really good friend, Samantha, who's helping us with the logistics and the emails and the organizing. So it's not all hundred percent us. She does a lot yes. of the behind the scenes work and we couldn't do it without her because she really yeah. is good at that stuff. So yes, we'll have like a Slack channel, we'll answer questions and we want them to feel like they have a good connection with us. But we felt like seven was a really manageable number to be able to Yes. create those connections with people and kind of an equal split men and women. So yeah, it's uh, something we're excited about. So it doesn't feel like work, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> will they be, will they be outfitted in your, in your kits as well? Yeah. 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 Castelli is kind of being the sponsor of the kits. So uh, we designed a kit for age group sales and then a kit for this development team and there'll be different colors, but similar to style. And mm -hmm. yeah, they'll be racing in this logo. Yeah. Well. It's very <laughs> distinctive. It's our TTL teal with the, with the circle on the back and it says TTL Devo on it. And I don't know, that's going to be the coolest thing for us when we see those out in the wild on those seven athletes. It's uh, yeah, it's fun. We're really <laughs> excited about that. Any, any racing this weekend? Yeah. One okay. of them is, but we don't have the kits ready yet. But okay. uh, Andy, Andy Kruger is his name. He actually lives in Bend, uh, close to us. So mm -hmm. he's, he's racing. <laughs> Eric, uh, from starting the whole idea of TTL and now uh, it's, it's a mature show. You're going every other week. What is what what has what have you gained from creating the show? Because obviously you're playing around as beginning. But then over time, you become you become a filmmaker. You become somebody who understands lighting, understands angles, all the rest of that. How important is doing the show? And obviously there's a lot of pressure on a weekly basis, but just yeah. doing that show and, and you're sort of forced, you're sort of forced to get good at this. Uh, what, what, what have you gained from it? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just like learning to swim better, learning to do any skill better, like quick feedback loop is, mm -hmm. is super important. And that's really when I started doing the weekly videos, it was like three years ago now. Yeah. Like the evolution of my filmmaking was just accelerated so quickly because every week I could get this product out there and I could watch it and go, oh man, I think I should have done that. I should have done that. I should have done this. But I wasn't so um, like tied to making each episode so perfect to where you put in increasingly, you know, more and more time, but get less and less return on it. So I just be like, you know right. what? I just need to get it out there. I know what I will do differently next week. And then I do that and, and, and build build my skill set that way. So um, I don't, I, I think going to every other week is, is not that big of a deal. Now um, we've told a lot of the stories, you know, I think I've, I've made four videos, four or five videos about Oceanside at this point. So it'll kind of give me a little bit of more of a chance to focus in on the stories that I haven't gotten a chance to tell um, going every other week. And then we also do our podcast once a week as well with our, our friend, Nick, who runs the podcast. So you can still, TTL is still out there every single week. If right. if not just on Sunday to Thursday and Sunday with the podcast. So um, there's I think still it's a lot of stuff coming out. There's a lot out. of stuff. There's still a lot of stuff. Absolutely. It's a natural evolution. And, and I don't want TTL to just be locked as a, as a YouTube channel forever. You know, I think it's got a lot more good that it can do um, through things like the development team or, yeah. you know, in-person events and, and in real life activations, you know, beyond YouTube. 
Uh, Paul, my original, when I first met you, I looked at you as a fairly private, shy person. Uh, how has this show changed you? Because it's, it's when Eric first, when you first start filming, it's sort of hard to, uh, to share. It's hard, hard to, to yeah, tell people yeah. your, your, your shares. And it's not just, hey, everything was great today. We had a great run. It's sometimes yeah. there's stuff that you'd rather not talk about. How has it helped you as an athlete just having the show and being able to talk to a camera and get stuff off your chest? Yeah, it's definitely a, a different experience living day to day, having your life so public than it would be yeah. to just kind of be behind the scenes, training hard, being very private, and then just showing it on the race course. And I kind of prefer to display the process and the lifestyle and it's become really fun. And it you go to races and it just create, you see the community that we built and it makes all of that worth it on the days where you don't feel like being filmed or Eric still pulls out the camera some days and I don't want my face on camera. So <laughs> it's still a balance, but I think I've gotten used to it. I see the value in it. I, I like it. Eric does the bulk of the work with the editing and the filming. So um, the least I can do is like put on a smile and, <laughs> you know, show, show, share some knowledge with, with all the supporters. But um, yeah, no, I, I really like it. It's been a long time now. I can't even remember life without TTL in it. So <laughs> it's uh yeah, it's just part of it. Both of you come from the ITU background where a mm -hmm. lot of races, you know, you're, you sort of go into a place like Yokohama. There really aren't any age groupers around. You're doing your your thing and then going to another city. How fun has been has the transformation been from ITU, just you and the other pros, to adding this whole element of age group athletes that really enjoy you and you enjoy them? That that that's that's such a different way uh, than so different from ITU, but in in so many ways, so much better. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of. I mean, it's allowed us to create these connections with people who get to race on the same course as us yep. right after us. And the style of our podcast, for example, we have people send in questions and we answer them. And the questions that they have are all things that we're talking about and we have experience with ourselves. So, like, we try to be as relatable as possible. And then seeing people in real life at races um, strengthens that bond and that community. And yeah, there are age group races at ITU, at ITU events, but it's, it's different. You race on a separate day or at a separate time right. and you don't really interact with them as much. So being at expos, being at places like Oceanside two days early. Um, yeah, it feels really cool and really different than when we were in our short course careers. Yes. Yeah, that was the primary motivation that, and just being able to like dictate your schedule a little bit more, drive to more races instead of, you know, 30 hours of travel. That was a bit of a grind, but that interaction was, was a huge driver for making the switch for sure. When you get letters or emails from from people who you don't know from Adam, but they know you, right? They they know who you are. You've you've helped them in some way, shape, or form. When you first started getting those notes, what was what was your thought on? Oh my God, this woman's sixty years old. She's lost thirty pounds. She's changed mm -hmm. her life, and she she gives us a lot of credit for that. That that's that's a pretty cool thing. I mean, that's the coolest thing. Um, I, 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 I've said this before, you know, like we make a little bit of money on like YouTube ads or whatever, but that's certainly not enough to like make me want to put in 10 hours of editing every week and, and try to be thinking right. about how I'm going to film a swim workout while doing a swim workout or whatever. Um, and it's kind of always seems to be like perfect timing when I'm like the most frustrated and feel like I'm just going to quit the whole thing that somebody writes a message like that. And is like, oh, this just like totally got me out the door and I was like getting really depressed or, you know, whatever the thing is. And, and I just, that gets me so excited to go back and like, okay, I need to make this video really good. Who knows who's going to see it for the first time. And that's going to, yep. you know, make a change like that. So, so what's the schedule for the rest of this year? Um, we're over. both, we're both going to go to Ibiza. I'll race the PTO European open and Eric will actually do the cross triathlon mountain bike ITU. Wow. Well, it's like the whole ITU world championship events festival thing. festival. So he'll do the cross triathlon kind of Very justifies fun. his plane ticket to get over there, but then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, 
And then it's a little TBD. We'll race uh, the U S open in Milwaukee world championships in Finland, maybe Singapore. Right. And then Eric's Eric will do Alcatraz. Um, I think course. it's good for us to kind of split up a little bit and do different races. Cause we do perform better that yeah. way, especially Eric, when he doesn't have to race the day after me. So I think it's okay for us to diverge a little bit and maybe support yes. each other at races versus both doing the same races. So yeah, yeah. The schedules are in flux. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to doing, I'll try to do Xterra Portland again and Xterra Alabama and then world championships will be in Italy again this year. And for one, Xterra. I, one I didn't get to do last year. Yeah. yeah. Xterra. That has to be brutal. Uh, the day, be, day before you're racing, you're <laughs> using so much energy, just following yeah. Paul. And then, then yeah. well, it's not even the physical energy because he actually did a good job at worlds of staying in the ho- in the Airbnb, but it's the yeah. emotional energy of, yes, you can't block it out as much as you try. No. So um, I'd feel the same way if I went second. Um, it's, yeah. we're so emotionally involved in each other's races and careers and it's the same thing. So yeah, yeah we, it's hard to, it's really, really hard to manage it on a, on a deeper <laughs> level than Lynn, you're like, you're necessarily even aware of you know, on the surface. Cause like Paula said, I did a really good job of staying in our hotel room and just going swimming while she was starting to run at, at world champs last year. And I made it all the way through till she was like coming home from the, uh, from the race until I just like got was like overcome with the emotion that I'd like tried to b- block out all day. And I just don't know how that's really yeah impossible to do that as, but as I think, significant other. I think at some of the PTO events this year, they're flopping it, flip flopping it. So the men will go, mm-hmm first and the women will go second i don't know which race is that. Why, why do women always go first? yeah i think we're switching it up so <laughs> it'll be better <laughs> yeah because for you it's awesome right you, you've raced go first? yeah yeah, yeah. I don't... if he's going if, if you're going first and you've you've done your race it's sort of like yeah. this year we did our think out on a racing party on friday night in kona and all the women raced on thursday like mm-hmm. all the pro women, they're like, this is the best. We're yeah. coming up here. <laughs> I know. The two day apart in Kona. Yeah, that was a lot. That was that was a lot. But <laughs> it was really fun because they were done. They go out okay, there yeah. and get a big cinnamon roll and watch these guys race. Who cares? Yeah, there's nothing that feels better than being done the world championships. Even if you didn't do well, <laughs> if you did do well, being done is awesome. <laughs> so when you guys are done with Oceanside, do you just drive back up to Oregon? No, no actually. We're actually currently planning on going to Flagstaff for a camp. Our coach Paulo Sousa and his group is yeah. going to Flagstaff. So we'll be with Perfect. that crew. Uh, the weather's iffy there, but yeah, we're, that's our plan. Right? Do some altitude and then go to Ibiza right from there. I love that. Yeah. Well, I, I love what you guys do. And I think creating a team, the coolest part is when, when our athletes give back and just seeing what you guys are doing, bringing, bringing this new group in of, of of young pros and I see them all the time, young pros who they, they don't know, they, they don't really know what to do. They don't yeah, know who yeah. to, who to trust. Uh, how do they yeah. get sponsors? How do they get to races? How, how do I get a kit? How do right, I get a Exactly. Yeah. You're they're trying they're to simultaneously, simultaneously start a small business while being a professional athlete, while trying to learn to take pictures or something or like, yes. yeah. Who do you ask? It's, it's hard. When it used to be, it was all about your results. All you did was you raced and you got results and you got sponsorship. Well, that's the beginning of the conversation now. Results mm-hmm. are great, but you yeah. also have to have social media presence and you have to be conversing with your sponsors on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of communication that goes into it that a lot of athletes aren't really aware of. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we hope we can help a little with that. It's not, It won't be like life-changing necessarily but hopefully we can have a small impact maybe and we'll see. catapult them up to the next level but yeah it's it's been fun <laughs> i love what you guys do the, the cool part is, is as your business has become more successful it's like oh how do we give back now rather than yeah. okay we make more dollars it's, it's right right it's yeah. all That's about part, yeah. that next generation and uh, pto has done a phenomenal job of bringing you know professionalism more dollars more hel- helping more pros stay in it Mm -hmm. I think without PTO in 2020, uh, a lot of people would be gone from the ranks, but you guys are making that next step and helping out that next generation. And you guys have both been there (laughs) when it was time to transition from ITU and Eric Mm -hmm. when, you know, okay, didn't make the Olympic team, but it was okay. I got to move on and do something else. And you, you created your own niche. You both have, it's very fun to watch. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Yeah. We we're having fun. <laughs> well, hopefully we'll get together for a, uh, for a cocktail of some sort while you guys are in my hood. 
Yeah. Yeah. Post race, we'll uh, we'll meet up. Post race, we will love it. <laughs> hey, great. Thanks, you guys, for taking the time. Always a pleasure to see you. Your smiling faces lighten up the screen. Makes my day. I, I, <laughs> Keep, the keep virtual being breakfast great. with Bob. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, That's we'll, be, so we'll be doing do Milwaukee. We'll do some other places, hopefully uh, cool. live and in color. I love it. Yeah, awesome. we'll, we'll see you in person for sure. Thanks, uh, Bob. Good. Eric Lagerstrom, Paul Finley have been our guests again. Breakfast with Bob. This is the Oceanside 70.3 edition. Thanks so much for checking us out. We'll catch you next time. See ya.